Hi, hello again. It's Jackie from the Connect Centre in Balamani. Today, I want to introduce you to a very special lady. I have known her personally since childhood. I remember a child in the garden. I would look at her walking down past and I would be delighted if she would say hello to me. I used to say to my mum, who is that lady? And she would say, oh, that's the lady that lives up the road. She was always special to me a lady who was always very open and who I realise now had the Lord in her heart and that's what made her special. So today I would like to introduce you to my friend Norma McComb. Hello everybody. Well what a lovely introduction I had from Jackie. It has been marvellous and can I just say that down through the years as I've and I'm recalling back Many, many years. I'm talking actually nearly 50 years. I'm going to give away my age now. But many, many times I walked down past Jackie. And many times, well, when I look back now, and I think it's maybe 50 years, and we're on a journey. And you know, I'm still on a journey today after all those years. I'm still learning. I'm still being encouraged. And I still need encouragement. But I want to talk today about confidence because over you know over this past year it's been a very mixed year. It's been a year of anxiety, a year when so many are filled with fear, so many are filled with, well, in the sense that they don't know how their employment is going. They don't know how long this pandemic's going to last. And yet we are on a journey with Jesus. I'm still learning and I have a lot to learn, but I want to thank God today for a saviour that saves to the uttermost and that is aware of all our fears, all our failings, all our anxiety. So I want to read, first of all, out of Hebrews. And it's in Hebrews 4, Jesus the great high priest. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. But it's this wee verse here. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You mean to say I can approach this throne with confidence? Now I want to emphasize, it's not in confidence in myself or in people around me. I come simply to my high priest who says he sympathizes and empathises with the way, and he knows our weaknesses, and he knows your weaknesses too. He knows sometimes that we get fearful, we get anxious, we get uptight, we get frustrated. I want to ask you today, what is your confidence in? Is it in your job? Is it in maybe your lifestyle? What is your confidence in during this time of as we look around us and we see so much pain and suffering around us. Where is your confidence? And this is a question, I'm, I'm not asking you something that I haven't asked myself, that God has asked me. What is my confidence in? He says, don't throw away your confidence, Norma. It will be richly rewarded. You have a race to run and I have a race to run. And your race may be different than mine. But you know what I remember him saying to me one day a few weeks ago? I said, Lord, I get it wrong so often. And I fall so easily sometimes. And he said, Norma, read on in Hebrews 12. Let us fix our eyes in Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And I said, that word perfecter, struck me in the heart so deeply. You mean, Lord, it's not up to me to do it? 
Now, that doesn't mean that we live any way we like. I'm not saying that. But it means through the things that we go through. And I can truthfully say through these times of lockdown and through different things in my life. And God gives you words to stand. His word. And that's maybe what I want to try and get across today. That our confidence is in him. It's his word that sustains you and me. That's my foundation. I have nothing else to stand on. And I want to finish with this little bit here in Proverbs. And it's in Proverbs 8. And I was so blessed the other day when I started to read this. And I hope, you know, make time for Jesus. I know with family life and things, things can be hectic. Things you can get tired. But I would encourage you to sit down and say, Good morning, Jesus. Can we talk? Will you give me some food today to eat out of your word that calms my fears and takes away my anxieties? We have confidence. For God said, you know, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, be confident in me. Be confident of this, that I am your helper. And I want to read this. And it says in Proverbs 8, The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. Now he's talking about wisdom. And who is wisdom? Jesus is wisdom from God. This is the Lord. But it was this bit. I was appointed from eternity. From the beginning, before the world began, when there were no oceans, I was given birth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills were given birth, before he made the earth or its fields, or any of the dust of the world, I was there, he said, when he set the heavens in place. And when he marked out the horizon, on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, and when he gave the sea its boundary line so that the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth, I was the craftsman at his side. I was filled with delight day after day Rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world, and delighting in mankind. Do you mean my father delights in you and me? Of course he does. He loves us with an everlasting love. This God, who has been appointed from eternity for you and me, this craftsman, that's good at perfecting you and me. Blessed are those. He said, listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not ignore it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For whoever finds me, finds life. This has been a great source of encouragement to me over the summer and over the times that when I felt maybe anxious about things or wondering how things are going to pan out. God, I have sat down with. Sometimes I haven't always be ready, been ready to sit down. I've found a thousand and one other things to do. But when I've sat down and he's opened his word, I can tell you whether it was the brow of a ship with Paul or whether it's here in some dilemma that each of us or whoever, whatever we're going through. But you know, when I look across the world today and I see the extent of the suffering and the things that are going on, I believe we're only skirting in the, the edges of things. We're only beginning to dig a little deeper. And that has come, I believe, through the lockdown and through the restrictions where we have been. But I believe God is releasing his people. And I believe it's time to listen. And it's time to wait. 
it's time to eat this word as our food, for it is indeed the word of life. He says, arise, shine, for your light has come. And he says, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't sit here today with someone that has all the answers. Indeed, I'm the opposite. But I know today, to each of his children, in these jars of clay, the Saviour lives. And as we walk with him, and as we talk with him, we can have great times together. And as he brings more and more of himself into our lives, and as we begin to look around us, and let him prompt us by his spirit. So take heart today. God is on his throne. He has been appointed from eternity. He is our saviour. And we can stand today, not in any strength of our own, or not in any confidence in ourselves, but in Jesus Christ. And who Paul could say, there were times I despaired even of life. Paul said there were many times I felt as if I, death was the only answer. There were times he said I fought, and I, there were times he says I was shipwrecked and beaten. He says it was beyond my ability to endure. But he says these things were allowed to happen so that Jesus might be seen. So he will help us and he will continue to help us. And as we encourage one another along this journey that we're on, remember he's the perfecter of our faith. Nestle in, sit with him a while and let him talk with you and you with him. Amen.